black markets are as old as civilization itself. Wherever there are laws in place for governing the sale of goods and services, there are people willing to break them for a profit. There are black markets for every good imaginable, from fine art to human organs, and from wine to illegal narcotics. As a result of our increasingly globalized economy, black markets often span the globe, run by shady criminal networks with operations in multiple countries. The biggest black market in the world today is the counterfeit goods market, which is estimated at $923 billion annually. This category includes luxury consumer products like handbags, but it also includes electronics and cosmetics. Data from custom seizures shows that the vast majority of fake products originate in Asia. The top countries of origin are China, Turkey, Singapore, Thailand, and India. That almost all of these products originate in China isn't exactly surprising, as that's where most of the world's consumer products are made. Often workers will leave the factory that makes a genuine product and open their own factory making counterfeits. These can then be sold to buyers from around the world who will in turn sell them on to consumers. Some of these products will be passed off as real and sold to unsuspecting customers, whilst others will be sold at fake product markets for a fraction of the cost of the real brand. Most of the law enforcement action happens in the countries where the products end up, and this is a difficult task as finding fake products isn't easy when they are mixed in with shipments of legitimate products. The sheer volume of international trade means that checking every shipment just isn't feasible. Drug trafficking is a $426 billion global market. As with regular trade, the flow of illicit drugs follows established trade routes based on supply and demand. The production hotspots are in Asia and South America, and from there they are transported around the world to be sold by street dealers. This requires an incredibly complex network of criminal organizations working together across different countries and continents to conceal the shipments, bribe law enforcement and customs officials, and do whatever it takes to ensure that it reaches its final destination. Just take as an example the flow of heroin from Afghanistan, by far the world's largest producer, to the lucrative Western European market. There are three main routes for it to reach Western Europe. The most popular of these is the Balkan route, which runs overland from Afghanistan through Iran to Turkey and then through the Balkan countries to its final destination in Western Europe. Depending on exactly where it is being sent to, the shipment may pass through more than 10 countries before it reaches the buyer. Of course, illegal drugs are often seized along this logistics chain, with the total value of custom seizures in the United States alone estimated at $2.3 billion in 2019. But the massive drug problems around the world are testament to the fact that vast quantities do get through undetected and are sold on to the end consumer. The global oil black market is worth $133 billion. The countries hit hardest by oil theft are Nigeria, Mexico, Iraq, Russia, and Indonesia. It is a lucrative business, the profits from which often go to fund terrorist organizations, mafia, and rebel groups. But it is extremely hazardous. The process of diverting oil from pipelines used by multinational corporations is complex and requires highly specific engineering knowledge to get right. Gangs often recruit engineers who previously worked for the oil companies. Once it's been extracted, the oil is transported to refineries operated by the same gangs, where it is refined to produce diesel and other petroleum products which can then be sold to consumers. There are some areas of the world where huge sections of the economy have been dominated by black markets, as government overregulation has impeded the legitimate economy. 
A case in point is Cuba, which for decades has enforced strict rationing of basic necessities, most importantly food, but also kerosene for cooking and other household items like light bulbs. This is obviously very restrictive. If it isn't in your rationing book and you can't find someone to swap with, then you have to go without under the government system. Because of this, almost all Cubans turn to buying things on the black market. Cuba's average salary is around $30 per month, but people who work in tourism can earn significantly more than this, and many people have relatives overseas sending them money each month. These people have disposable income and really the only place for them to spend this is in the black market. Cuba's strict socialist regime has effectively driven underground what would be, in any other country, legitimate businesses and in the process created a thriving black market. Areas with high inflation and strict currency controls are prone to black markets for stable currency, primarily US dollars. Current hotspots for this trade are Venezuela, Iran and Lebanon. Citizens of these countries want to trade the rapidly depreciating local currency for the strong and stable US dollar. The governments of these nations have enforced strict controls on the flow of money and any exchange of currency outside of the official channels is highly illegal and could be punished with years in prison. But when faced with the reality of losing their life savings to hyperinflation, people would rather take the risk. As of July 2020, the black market exchange rate in Lebanon is 8,200 Lebanese pounds to one US dollar, much higher than the official rate of 3,850 pounds to the dollar. People are willing to exchange at such a poor rate as they are worried about the integrity of their savings. Yearly inflation is currently at 56%, which is not hyperinflation territory yet, but with no sign that the currency crisis is going to end soon, it is very concerning. For many people, it may just be better to take the hit of the poor exchange rates on the black market than to risk keeping their savings in the local currency. After all, if the crisis worsens and Lebanon does go the same way as Venezuela, the Lebanese pound will eventually become worthless. Millions of people's savings will vanish and the only way to protect against this is to convert them into a stable currency. In Lebanon today, the only reliable source of US dollars for the average person is to acquire them on the black market. Rather than being separate from the world economy, black markets are an integral part of it. Half of the world's workforce is employed in these informal economies. While some black markets are abhorrent and immoral, it's clear that some others fill a genuine need of the citizens of countries that have been ravaged by political mismanagement or war. We've just covered a few of the many thousands of different black markets that exist around the world. They truly are a global phenomenon and each region, country and city has its own shadow economy based on demand and the peculiarities of the local laws. What are the biggest black markets where you are from? Leave a comment below and let us know. If you enjoyed this video, hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell so you can find out when the next one is posted. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.